Hi there guys, Zor here of ZorGameGeek.com. Today we're going to talk about Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. Not the entire thing. Way too long for a single video to talk about Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. But instead, we're going to talk about its most innovative rules design and advance. Now, I played Dungeons & Dragons all the way since 1st Edition. Now, there's a lot of debate as to what exactly constitutes 5th Edition, so... Advanced Dungeons and Dragons is what I started with back in the late 80s, the old uh, 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 first edition Player's Handbook and DMG. In fact, I think I have one of those uh, copies of those somewhere here behind me. But regardless, I've played every edition since fifth, or excuse me, every edition since first, and many other different types of role playing games. And when it came out five or so years ago, fifth edition had this amazing innovation that got rid of, sort of, got rid of all those little fiddly bits that had kind of creeped into the system over the years. And those fiddly bits, well, they're still there a little bit, but it's all those situational bonuses that, especially in third edition, really came to the fore. When you're flanking, you add a plus two. When you are prone, you have a minus two. You uh, are behind cover, you have total cover, partial cover, obscured, and all these little things that added in these pluses and minuses, and you felt like you were doing some accounting as you had to then, before you rolled your attack, you had to then add all of those bonuses and, and, and uh, negatives and get it together and have a final number that you add to your dice. 5th edition got rid of a lot of that for these situational bonuses. Now, they still have a plus 3, a plus 4 to your attack rolls, but that's based solely upon the statistic that you're using to make the roll, strength, dex, intelligence, wisdom, charisma, depending on whether you're a rogue, you're a fighter, you're a, uh, a sorcerer, you're a wizard, or you're a cleric, roughly speaking and you add a proficiency uh, bonus number that is based upon your level, that's all in your character sheet. You should just have that filled in on your character sheet. You roll a d20, you add your uh, modifier, and you see whether you hit or not. What 5th edition did in getting rid of all those little fiddly bits, all those little fiddly bonuses and penalties, is they added in what they called the advantage-disadvantage mechanic. And it's real simple. If at your table, you're using the optional flanking rules, or you have a situational bonus where maybe you are shooting your uh, light crossbow and you have height on your opponents. You're up uh, uh, two stories, and so you have an advantage shooting down at them. Instead of adding a plus five or a plus three or a plus two or whatever the rule system say, you just simply roll 2d20 and you pick the higher result. That's it. Simple. And then you add your, your, your bonus that you already know that's static. It's been that way since the last time you leveled. You add it and you see whether you hit or miss. Now, if you have disadvantage, let's say that instead of firing down, you're having to fire up at an enemy, then you're going to have disadvantage going upwards. As Obi-Wan Kenobi says, I have the higher ground. Firing up may impose disadvantage or should impose this advantage, at least it does at my table, it's really simple. Again, the player rolls 2d20, and they take the lower result. And whichever is lower, they add their bonus to it, their static bonus, and they see whether they hit or miss. It's elegant, it's simple, and now the question comes, well, what if I have uh, something that gives me disadvantage and something else that gives me advantage? It's really simple. They cancel each other out and you just roll 1d20, take the straight result, the straight die. Or, well, you say, well, I got something that gives me two advantages, but only one disadvantage. Well, what does that do? Again, the rules say, ignore all that. We, we're not counting things up. This isn't Dungeons and Accountants. This is Dungeons and Dragons. You just, if you have any number of advantages and any number of disadvantages, they just all cancel each other out and you roll a single D20 and off you go. It's simple, it's elegant, and it speeds things up at the table tremendously compared to what it was like in 3, 3.5, and 4th edition. Now, 
They did let some of that little fiddly bit creep back into the rules though. However, you can ignore this if you want, and that comes with cover and whether you're obscured. Cover is you're behind some sort of uh, tree trunk or partial or, or maybe you're around the corner. And in those situations, the rules say you actually add either a plus two or a plus five to the armor class of the defender. So it's kind of behind the scenes for the player character if it's the monster, but it's not if the other way around. And then similar rules for uh, a light uh, being lightly obscured or, well, heavily obscured is a little bit different. Lightly obscured, you have uh, a plus two to the defendant. If you're heavily obscured, you're actually blinded and now you're back at advantage, disadvantage. Again, see, just there, right there, dealing with those four conditions, slightly different rules, slightly different things, it's very fiddly. Um, but they wanted to try to create some sort of bonus for being in total cover versus partial cover. And so there, and, and, and partial obscurement, light obscurement versus full obscurement. And so they creeped them back in and at your table, you may just wanna say, look, it's advantage, disadvantage. We don't care how heavily obscured you are, just go for it and ignore those, those, those differences. So there you have it. If you wanna learn more about the basics of fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons, come visit www.zorgamegeek.com slash fifth. Again, if you wanna learn more about Dungeons and Dragons fifth edition, go to zorgamegeek.com slash fifth. All right, keep on gaming.